Today, we've got a super cool topic lined up for you. It's called recursion. In this video, we're going to have a fun time exploring what recursion really is, how it works. We'll even use a simple example in JavaScript to show it in action. Plus, we'll talk about why it's super important to have something called a base case, so our code doesn't get all tangled up and crash. Let's go. Okay, let's get straight to the point. What is recursion? It's when a function in a program calls itself to do a task. It's like a to-do list, where each task is to do the next smaller task. But here's the thing. It can't go on like that forever, right? That's where the base case comes in. It's the end point, the condition that tells the function, hey, you can stop calling yourself now. We're done. Without this base case, our function would keep going on and on. And we don't want that. So recursion is really just a self-calling function. Moving on to the second part of our journey with recursion. Let's see how it works with an example. We'll use something called factorials in JavaScript to understand recursion better. A factorial is a math thing where you take a number and multiply it by all the numbers below it until you get to one. So if you have the number five, the factorial of five is five times, four times, three times, two times, one. Now, how does recursion fit into this? Let's look at some simple JavaScript code. In this code, we have a function named factorial that takes a number n. If n is 1 or 0, we've hit our base case, and the function just returns 1 because the factorial of 1 and 0 is 1. Easy, right? But if n is not 1 or 0, the function calls itself but with n minus 1, and so on. Let's walk through the JavaScript factorial function step by step, imagining a visual board where we can see each part of the process. Imagine a stack of plates at a buffet. Each time we call our function, it's like we're adding a plate to the stack. That's our call stack, where we keep track of all the function calls. First, we call factorial, 5. On our visual board, we add factorial, 5, to the call stack, which is our way of keeping track of the function calls. Since n is not 1 or 0, we don't hit our base case. Instead, we look at the else part of our code. Here, we break down the multiplication, 5 asterisk factorial, 4. We place the number 5 to the left, ready to multiply by the result of factorial, 4, which we now need to call. Now, we call factorial, 4, as the next step in our recursion. We add this call to our visual board on top of factorial, 5, in the call stack. In the function, since n is not 1 or 0, we move to the multiplication part, 4 asterisk factorial, 3. We place the number 4 in our visuals, ready to be multiplied by the result of factorial, 3, which we now need to evaluate. So we call factorial, 3, and add factorial, 3, to the call stack, stacking it above factorial, 4. Since n is 3 and still not equal to our base case of 1 or 0, we proceed once again to the else section. This leads us to 3 asterisk factorial, 2. In our visuals, we prepare to multiply the number 3 by the outcome of factorial, 2, which is our next step. We call factorial, 2, and add it to the stack, placing it carefully above factorial, 3. We find that n is 2, not yet our base case. The else path beckons us forward once more. This translates to 2 asterisk factorial, 1, in our process. We then call factorial, 1. This time, as we add it to the stack, it takes a special place at the very top. As factorial, 1 returns 1, the stack begins to unwind. We start with factorial, 2. On our visual board, we see 2 asterisk factorial, 1. Since factorial, 1 returned 1, we can now replace it with its result. So, factorial, 2, simplifies to 2 asterisk 1, which resolves to 2. This completed value of factorial, 2, is now ready to be used by the next call in the stack. Moving up, factorial, 3, was waiting for the result from factorial, 2. We replace factorial, 2, with its value, 2, and get 3 asterisk 2, which gives us 6. Next, factorial, 4, had been paused at 4 asterisk factorial, 3. With the value from factorial, 3, now known, which is 6, we can conclude that factorial, 4, is 4 asterisk 6, resulting in 24. Finally, we reach the top of the stack where factorial, 5, is awaiting its turn. It's represented as 5 asterisk factorial, 4. 
we can now substitute factorial 4 with 24 and so factorial 5 becomes 5 asterisk 24 is equal to 120. This process of resolving each call one by one and removing them from the stack illustrates the fundamental beauty of recursion. Now, let's explore what happens when recursion is attempted without a base case. To illustrate why this is problematic, we'll use our factorial function, but this time, we'll omit the crucial base case check. Imagine we call factorial 5 just as before, but our function is now missing the safeguard against endless recursion. The function calls 5 asterisk factorial 4, and we add factorial 4 to our stack. But without a base case, factorial 4 then calls 4 asterisk factorial 3. And so it goes, factorial 2, factorial 1. Now here's where things go astray. Normally, factorial 1 would return 1, and the recursion would begin to unravel. Instead, missing the base case, and we add factorial 0 to the stack. The pattern continues unchecked, goes factorial minus 1. Since the function never hits a base case, it will continue to call itself. Eventually, the stack reaches its limit, a situation known as stack overflow. This demonstrates the critical importance of a base case in recursive functions. That wraps up our guide on recursion. If you learned something new today, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips. Got questions or suggestions? Drop a comment. Thanks for watching.